today it is my honor and privilege to welcome my dearest friend who have known for 25 years Christina Pearson to this Google Hangout to discuss trichotillomania and picking and body focused repetitive behaviors and the heart and soul academy and the upcoming retreat Christina, if there is someone who has been on another planet for the last 25 years and doesn't know who you are, could you just tell our viewers a little bit about yourself? Sure. This will be uh, quick and specific. I'm 58 years old. When I was 12, I started pulling my hair. When I was 15, I started picking my skin. Both were horrible. Uh, I suffered for 27 years, well, not quite that long, about 23 years thinking I was the only human being on the planet that did these things. And I got a psychiatric discharge from high school for pulling out all my hair. And so my life was deeply impacted. At the age of 33, I found out there were other people and that there was a name for this disorder, trichotillomania. It hadn't even gotten to the skin picking yet. But the amazing thing was, I was so relieved there was a name, although I hated the name. The problem was is that when I dug a little deeper, there were no resources. Nobody, it was a ridicul ridiculed kind of problem. And there was nothing being done. There was no treatment that was really available. And it infuriated me. I had the honor and the opportunity and being in the right place at the right time to start an organization called the Trichotillomania Learning Center, uh, which I um, kind of uh, developed and guided and, uh, what do you say, uh, fought for and sweated for and cried for. Um, and now it is a successful national nonprofit serving many, many people. I left TLC a couple of years ago in order to address what I felt was a huge gap in resources. Here's the thing. No, we don't have a perfect cure. And as a matter of fact, right now, what we know is that each person needs to have a particular approach kind of designed for who they are and uh, that works in their life. Okay, that's great. We do have tools that work. We have things that can make you feel better in life, can enhance your overall well-being, and if you put the work in, can reduce or even eliminate your behaviors. The problem is we don't have a way to really deliver all that knowledge, and um, and I saw that TLC, I created TLC to be an icebreaker, kind of break through public denial and start building some validity and giving these types of body-focused repetitive behaviors, give them a voice. Good, we're there. But TLC has so much on its plate that I saw that it couldn't just do the everyday educational stuff. How do you hold people's hands in their own communities, uh, uh, in the situations where they do pick and pull as opposed to going to a conference, going to a retreat, then you get back home and you're like, okay, now what? Mm -hmm. So what I saw was the need for some type of uh, educational delivery system of classes that would include useful information, underlying uh, themes being uh, uh, living skills. And so I developed, I left TLC to develop something called the Heart and Soul Academy, which is really about delivering courses that have, that may not always be empirically uh, data driven, but that we know that these concepts, strategies, skills can help a lot of people. So it's very experimental. Um, I know I'm jumping around a little bit, but so I've been teaching classes online for the last couple of years. It's great. It works well. People have magnificent changes in their life. Um, and that was because I needed to test the waters kind of to see if it was a good delivery system for us because it's not in person. And sure, it'd be great if you had a therapist down the street that could like be there for you 100%, but that's probably not going to happen for a while. So uh, the idea is to have uh, 
a school that would allow you to take online and also attend in-person events, and I'll get to that in a minute. Um, the, the goal... Okay, you go ahead. Uh, the, the goal is to um, have people practice these things at home while being in touch with each other and at the same time following a particular template that, that we know is very effective for transmitting these types of information. Mm -hmm. So all that's good. I'm going to jump backwards a little to my story and tell you that when I started the Trichotillomania Learning Center, I was missing 45% of my scalp hair and I had been picking my face so that I looked like I had uh, chicken pox. Oftentimes I had many little open sores and at the time I was anti-makeup because I don't know why. I sh it would have sure helped a lot but I didn't wear it and there were many days where I didn't want to go out. Luckily I had a job where I was mostly on the telephone so I didn't have to be seen. Today I have about a, a little over 20 years of solid recovery. Is it perfect? No. I've pulled my hair three times. I've picked my face about five times. Uh, but in a 20 year span for a woman who used to pick and pull two to six hours a day um, mm -hmm. and thought she was the most effective person on the planet, I'm really grateful and I'm good. Well, and I I do wanna, I'm just going to interrupt you for a second. Um, what I love about you so much is through your courage and your willingness to find a solution for body-focused repetitive behaviors, TLC was created. Mm -hmm. and you are Mother Earth, in my humble opinion. You are the heart and soul of recovery for body-focused repetitive behaviors. Um, everything I stopped pulling out my hair because of you and because of the creation for TLC. And I know that I'm not the only one, that there are many thousands of people mm -hmm. who have gained control over these behaviors. Mm -hmm because of your work and your commitment and dedication and what TLC is doing. What I think is so exciting is for both of us in this day and age in the 21st century, now we're in this electronic revolution, if you want to call it that, where we can reach out to people in their own homes, wherever they are. If they're in a major city, fantastic. If they're in a small town, wherever they are, we can reach out through video, through your, through your classes. Um, I reach out through video consulting and video counseling um, to do one-on-one -on -one coaching and, and counseling for skin picking and hair pulling. So in this day and age, the electronic age has opened up a host of opportunities for recovery for people. So if they don't have someone across the street who's skilled in this, we can still serve them. That's what I think is so exciting. Okay, I just wanted to stick that in there, but keep going with Heart and Soul Academy or wherever you want to go. Well, there's so much to say and we don't have a lot of time. This is what I know from my own recovery. A huge part of our healing, BFRBs are disorders of isolation. We tend to do them without other people viewing. We tend to do them and keep the damage hidden in our hearts. We tend to do them and feel like failures and why can't I control my body? So one of the first and most wonderful processes is to shed the shame. Shed yeah. the shame of, oh my God, it's all my fault and I right. am all messed up. Shedding shame is a huge part of being able to move forward because once you kind of get the truth, it's not your fault. This stuff started long before us and it'll end long after us. And Christina, that's huge. for the parents too, as well as the person affected by this. Shedding that's true. shame is a family problem. It is a family problem and there's a lot of reality to the whole family has to heal. But we're not going there yet. What I'm talking about is the bottom line. 
it may not be your fault. It's not like you were a little kid and said, oh my God, I want to grow up and develop a disfiguring disorder. And it's not like as a parent you said, oh yes, I want to have a child and I'm so excited to have that and I want them to develop this problem. No, that's not it. Mm -hmm. It happened for a number of reasons. Probably some uh, genetic predisposition. It's also a very primal response of the nervous system in regards to being overstimulated or understimulated. It's also a symptom. These are symptoms not of a problem in themselves, but of a greater system being in imbalance. It's a signal of a system in distress. Now it might be on an emotional level, a physical level, a spiritual level. Uh, a cognitive level or it may be little bits and pieces of all of that and I won't even get more into that the wonderful thing is that because we understand today that you know it wasn't just about stopping my hair it wasn't just about not picking my skin and I used to have all these marks over my chest oh my god open sores for months I had huge welts on my head where I would pull out hair I mean it was just devastating it took kind of stepping into my own shoes, uh, owning that I was an okay person, that I was a fallible person, and that I didn't have the answers, so I needed to be open, open to the possibility that maybe I could learn how to do this. And that meant not making a choice in where that help was going to come from. Who am I to determine how help is going to come? It's kind of like, you know, uh, when you don't even know and you think you know, but you don't really know. So, in September, September 10th through the 13th in Granby, Colorado, we will be holding a retreat. And a retreat, we've been doing annual BFRB retreats for 21 years. There was a slight hiatus when I left TLC uh, because I had to kind of reground and regroup and uh, work with in alliance with TLC to try to get this Heart and Soul Academy up and running and uh, but the Academy is proud to be hosting uh, this event which is essentially uh, what have I been told? I've been told that you go to a retreat and you shed you know, what 10 years of therapy couldn't do for you. In other words, it, it is an immersive project. People come from all over the world. We also bring in leading and knowledgeable and compassionate therapists, clinicians, psychologists, uh, and workshop facilitators, some of the best in the world, who spend time together. Uh, and it's a... Uh, a profound experience. If you want to learn more about it, go to the Heart and Soul Academy dot or I'm sorry, Heart and Soul Academy dot org, O R G, and you have to write out the whole thing, and you'll see the information. There's also a Facebook page, Heart and Soul Academy, and you can uh, find information there. You can also call me. Welcome to call me. My phone number is nine seven zero six nine seven nine six seven seven so more on that what I'm really excited about is the fact that after 25 years there's a lot of us who have a good sense of what recovery is about and how to maintain it people like Joan and I and I think we have a huge forward movement in the therapeutic community. We have young doctors that are very interested in getting on board, learning more, but that's all going to take some time. So I really want to highlight that there are things that you can do today that will help you feel better and improve the family environment. And the fact is, we live in a culture that's under huge distress and or most of us don't like to acknowledge that, but we're living in a system of overstimulation, overwhelm. Our nervous systems are not even caught up with like electricity yet, barely. And we're way beyond that in externalizing our nervous systems into the cloud, okay? You know, carrying all your schedules and data is not in your mind, but in the cloud on your iPhone or whatever it is. So we're really in this huge transition, and guess what? People with BFRBs 
don't handle transitions all that well. Okay. And uh, sometimes we have difficulty shifting from one state to another. And so once you understand that, you can practice some skills, living skills, that make it easier so that you don't get so overwhelmed and you understand how to set better boundaries to take care of yourself while you're navigating a very, very uh, complex environment with a very hypersensitive nervous system. Okay. So... I just wanted to, that's Please. so beautiful, Christina. I wanted to mention that with my experience of coming to the retreats for so many years, first as a participant, and then I was honored to be asked to teach some classes there. And today, I'm wearing my bead bracelet. <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> I had uh, Christina at the um, retreats. In the past, we would get into a loving circle, and then she would choose a very special bead that she would get, and then go to each person and gift them this bead so that we could carry the love and what we learned and the experience of, of being at a retreat with us forever. We could bring this home. We have it in our hearts and I wear mine on my wrist. I'll just comment. Here's the thing about the bead. Each year, the retreat, at the end of the retreat, we give a stone bead. The stone bead is symbolic of a necklace. Necklaces are connected beads. Well, this is a necklace of love, and it's interconnected by life. And the bead is just a, a manifestation of the acknowledgement of that lovingness between us all. And um, and it's interesting to see what people have done with their beads. And uh, I've seen them in rings and necklaces on dressers and altars and all just, you know, all kinds of fun things. But it is really just a symbol of the reminder that we are not alone and that we're all in this together and that honestly, it is the manifestation of willing, willingness and lovingness that really transforms our life. And, and here's what I know about behavior. If you really want to change behavior, you have to step into the unknown because mm -hmm. all you know is doing the behavior. Do you really know what it's like to live a life not compelled with these types of habituations and impulses? and and the fact is, it's really just the beginning um, because we have so many areas in life that could use a little adapting. But it is a relief to come to an event and find out that, oh my God, they don't have three heads and a purple uh, third eye or whatever. Uh, really, these are wonderful, wonderful people. We come from every socioeconomic, every educational level, every ethnic group. It's it's us, mm -hmm. and um, and we the do tend to be smart. What? It's part of being human. Yes, and what's so interesting about that is that BFRBs, hair pulling and skin picking, these are really interspecies problems, and they're always signs of a system in distress. And so it, it moves us into a more archetypal place. I remember in 1991, I was uh, interviewed by a local paper. She, and the reporter was like, well, what do you think is going on here? And I said to her something along these lines. I said, you know, I'm not really sure. But when you have millions and millions of people in our country alone and around the world, when you have them tearing at their skin, pulling out their hair, and it's all under the radar, and yet it's this huge realm of sorrow and deep distress. What does that say about the society we're in? Okay, And this is not as a big, oh my God, you know. This is really about acknowledging that maybe, maybe it's time to pay attention to the signals. Like we're waking up to our impact on our Earth, our mm -hmm. own planet, our home. 
you know, uh, that which gives us our sustenance and yet uh, our kind of blind interactions have caused some problems. And so I want to say about these behaviors that they're both indicative on a small scale, but they're also indicative on a large scale. And it's time that we embrace the whole picture and get willing to do whatever it is we need to do to heal ourselves, those around us, and the world. So, And the message that I want to send out to everyone who's watching us today is a message of hope message of hope that they are not alone, that there are effective treatments available, that there are affordable effective treatments, and the sky is truly the limit whether they want the traditional therapy, whether they come to you for mindfulness training, whether they come to me for my classes on Udemy University, for my app, I stop picking, pulling rather, I stop pulling, and you can too, which a tracker will be added soon. There are so many resources, thanks to you for starting the movement, there are so many resources that are available to people through you, through me, through TLC, that it's so possible to learn and it's so possible to get balanced again. And I think it's an important, important thing to know that we are at the beginning of beginning to recognize the depth of these types of conditions. It's not just a simple habit, it's actually uh, much more complex and involved in our lives. And so just know that together we move a whole lot faster than trying to do it all by ourselves and that by bringing ourselves consciously into each other's zones we can share and move much faster than we even are now so um, yeah and I you know here's the my final little bit when I started TLC the average person that called the learning center back in the early 90s was a woman 50 or older who had suffered already for 25, 30, sometimes 40 years with no help, no recognition, no name, nothing. Today, the majority of people who call for help are parents calling about their children, adolescents, young adult children, but generally they've started pulling recently, not 40 years yeah. ago. Yeah. So more help is available, but there's so much to do. And we can do it, you know. Um, the other thing is, is that uh, it's important to recognize that what works for one person might not work for another. I've had people stop because they were tapped, you know, using uh, emotional freedom techniques, uh, uh, working with energy flows. I've had people stop because they stopped drinking Diet Pepsi. Don't ask me why, but that's, you know, you get a letter. I got a letter once years ago where a dad said his 12-year-old daughter had been healed of trichotillomania because she was hit by lightning when they went camping. Well, I'm like, don't try that. <laughs> and then other people, you know, we do have therapeutic techniques today that can make a huge difference. What's mm -hmm. wonderful, and I, my favorite behavioral therapy kind of schemata involves some of the principles of dialectical behavior therapy and also what we call the comb model which is the comprehensive behavioral approach to treating trick and skin picking but they have to be adapted to you might also need to change a little diet increase your exercise you know uh, change things in your life I mean it it's from person to person and I had somebody who just saw a picture of a model years ago he saw a picture he understood it because it was a picture of the domains that trigger us two years later I got a note from him he hadn't pulled since he saw that picture wow. so it's not for us to say this is gonna work for you that's gonna work for you have to be open and yes. see what works in your own life so I also want to thank you so much. That's so beautiful. Sure. 
I also want to let any therapist that's watching this hangout know, please, if you're interested in this area, please take the Professional Training Institute from TLC, join TLC, uh, learn from us, come to the conferences, please learn and about treats. Yes. And if you have something that can be taught, meaning a basic strategy, a particular approach, on an educational basis you may want to apply to teach a course through the Heart and Soul Academy. This is not offering group therapy, although it can have a therapeutic impact because what I know is when people have accurate information and kind of a uh, an awareness of what is available, they make better choices. Mm -hmm. So share your knowledge. Share okay. your knowledge. Thank you. If anybody needs to get a hold of me, they can easily go to joankaylor.com. That's my website. They can call me at 724-413-0964. They can email me at joankaylor at hotmail.com. Christina, this has been OMG. Thank you so much for doing this with me and thank our my wonderful director producer guru of podcasting power podcasting with Scott Patton he is yes. a genius and he I, has I, helped me so much with my app creating my courses on Udemy if it's electronic Scott doesn't I haven't had the problem that some people have getting uh, everything into the cloud let me put it that way before we go, though, Christina, could you just let everyone know where they can find out, like, the domain name for the Heart and Soul Foundation and all that stuff, just one more time now that we're at yes. the end? Yes. Thank you so much, Scott. And for anybody who's never heard of it, go to udemy.com. Is that right? U-D-E-M-Y. I was blown away. It is an amazing learning platform. Heart and Soul Academy. That's with the A and D all, so, all spelled out. So it's heartandsoulacademy.org. That's the website. Phone number is uh, 970. We're in Colorado now. 970-697-9677. And you'll get me. And I would love, I would be an honor to chat with you about whatever is going on. And if you want more information about the upcoming event, which is truly a life transforming opportunity, um, just give me a call. All right. Please, everybody, go to the retreat. <laughs> My email, you can reach me at Christina at heartandsoulacademy.org. We got connected. We're connected through our hearts as well as electronically. And it's true because, and that's, it, you need to do what you can do to get connected. To get because connected. you know why? When we're connected, we feel better. That's yeah. it. That's it. I love you, Christina. Thank you. Thank you to both of you. <laughs> okay, bye. See you next time.